You know, I always say that no child's born bad. A lot of friends even joke around like, come on, man, like you had 19 arrests and seven convictions by the time you were 13 years old. Like, how can you say that no child's born bad? My name is Xavier McElroy, I'm from the back of the yards on the south side of Chicago. I was a kid who was just following the crowd. My home was just very violent and volatile at all times, in fact, and so it became quite natural for me to run to the streets. My gang became my greatest strength. Whenever I needed a place to stay because my stepfather was being violent, I knew I had my friends. As soon as I hit the streets and as soon as my friends became a part of the gang, we had access to weapons. You know, you find yourself wanting to go venture off and to see how they look. You want to see how they feel. You want to pick one up. Some friends and, and myself, we pulled the guns from underneath the porch. We saw this very long 22 Smith & Wesson revolver. It looked like a Yosemite Sam gun, like one that you would see in cartoons. And we were intrigued by it. My friend was playing with it, spinning the chamber. And within moments, while not realizing the gun was pointing directly at me, the gun went off. I was shot in my face beneath my left eye. And so if you see a small dimple, it's really not a dimple, it was a bullet hole. Blood was rushing out of my mouth, out of my nose. Right then and there, I just knew for a fact I was gonna die. And I remember asking God, why me? You know, why me? One of the first questions a police officer had asked me, he said, who shot you? And you know, even though I was laying on what could have been my deathbed, I knew for a fact I wasn't gonna tell my best friend. We may have not been the best influences to each other, but we were truly the greatest consolation in each other's lives. I just wanted a sense of you know, camaraderie and love, and I felt it in the streets with my friends. That particular phase of my life didn't last long because at 13, I was already being charged with murder. You know, on this night, I saw an individual turning around the corner and this individual was Pedro Martinez. He was a 14-year-old kid. I was 13 at the time. And I remember when he turned the corner, my first thought was he's a rival gang member. So I alerted my fellow gang members, hey, watch out for that guy. You know, I often say, I wish I can go back to 51st and Loomis and just stop him and say, you know, go that way. You know, don't, don't come this way. He was killed. And I was responsible for that. That's, that's just the world that we were in, you know. Oftentimes, those that you would refer to as your enemy, you really had nothing personal against these individuals. And it's simply because they grew up on the other side of IDOT. We had concocted this world in our head that our enemy looked just like us. And it was very sad because as children, we were very young, risk-taking and impetuous, given a peer pressure. And many of us got swallowed up in my neighborhood. And unfortunately, Pedro was one of them. I remember very vividly uh, feeling as if I had done the most horrible thing ever and that I would never be forgiven and that God would never look down upon me with favor. I was given a 25-year sentence. The state's attorney he said the defendant has an extensive juvenile arrest record indicative of a violent nature. He was saying that in a sense I would never change. I came out at age 26 and when I came out, I didn't really know what my life would become to think that, wow, Xavier, you, know, you made some horrible decisions. You had 19 arrests and seven convictions. But looking back, you know, it's not hard for me to understand why. If you feel like the gang and the life that you're living is the only source of love and support, then you're, you're given to destructive behavior. But what really helped me to be able to embrace who I really was inside and to even begin to forgive myself at all was just really recognizing that I simply was a child.